whereas when you're uncomfortable, that's where, you know, the str you're straining, like you're, there's pressure being put on you, but it's like good pressure, it's, it's hard work that requires everything in you to, you know, muster up the courage and the strength and the energy to accomplish these tasks. But when you do accomplish those tasks, you know, light bulbs go off and you just feel an authentic confidence, you know, and resiliency in yourself. Tell me about the crash and burn. Um, yeah, so I was uh, going back to Baltimore. This was August 11th, 2017. I was moving. I was going to move out of my apartment just because I was suspended the whole year and didn't want to spend money on, on rent and stuff. I was moving back with my parents. And I got there the day before my dad got there. And, you know, I was like, well, I'm going to get high here one last time. Went and picked up some pills and thinking that they were what I usually got and they were like fentanyl. And, you know, I, I had taken them and was pulling up to this grocery store that was right out the street from my apartment and right near next, like basically right near the practice facility for the Ravens. And we were pulling in the parking lot and then I was just about to hop out like normal. And like, I just like, I just couldn't get out because I got out. I would have like thrown up everywhere and just, it just would have caused a scene. I was going to, I would have like fainted probably. And I was just like, you know, I'm just going to sit in the car until, you know, I feel a little better. And like maybe in a few minutes, maybe 30 minutes passed by. And I just remember like, it was like somebody pulled like a power plug and I just woke up and it was like nighttime. And I was like, you know, like sweating and like cold and just out of it. And, I was, and at the time I just, thought it was you know oh you know I just like took a nap I was you know I was pretty high and but it was just like you know just how tired and defeated I felt but the next day I was like there had to be something more and it was you know basically like an overdose and I feel like you know like like that could have been over right there for me and that was mm -hmm. like scary enough like as I processed it over the next you know a few hours and into the next day I was like you know, I'm all right. It's been a ride and I've been trusting it, but now it's like these drugs and alcohol ain't my friend no more. Like it was my friend. It was like the key to peace and making friends and having a good time. But now it's just like, it's none of that anymore. And it would, it scared me enough to be like, all right, I'm not in control anymore. So I thought I had control over it, but I was like, I have no control whatsoever. And, um, you know, since that day I haven't used it from there. It was like, after that, my parent, I was honest with my parents for the first time and honest with the league and stuff. And my parents kind of shared my family history with me and was basically saying like, your family has been doing the same thing, uh, you know, generation after generation. Um, are you going to continue to look at that and, you know, act like it's not the truth and continue to do what you're doing? Or are you going to be the person that changes that? And so, the overdose and then my family talking to me like that was enough for me to change and willingly go to rehab. Wow. Sounds like you have a really uh, caring, loving family. And, and, and that, uh, that approach was, sounds like it was really effective and helpful. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and then, so that was kind of the moment that was the turning point for you. Uh, yeah. I, there was a, there was a little bit of, you know, Pushed back on my behalf for the rehab at first. Yeah. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, eventually I was just like, I think I need it. I need to learn new skills and new habits and, you know, put myself in an uncomfortable situation for once. My comfort zone isn't doing a lot for me right now. And right. so I went to a, like a detox place uh, for four days and then went to uh uh, rehab in Maine at this place called McLean Hospital Boarding Cottage. And I had never been to Maine before, but it was one of the beautiful, most beautiful places I ever been first off. And, and second off, just like the rehab experience was just incredible. I remember, you know, one of the first, when we first got there, you know, we went to a meeting like the first day and I was just like, when I was just like terrified uh, uh -huh. and just like, you know, like, with, like the way people were speaking and, um, you know, like talking about the steps and, you know, all the literature they were reading. I was just like, you know, what is this place? Like, how is this, how is this even possible? First off, I was just sitting in the back, just quiet, just listening, taking it all in. And I was just like, it's going to probably take me a while before 
I'm in here sharing and you know laughing and smiling and stuff because I was in there. I'm sweating. I'm just like looking around. I'm like I don't know what's going on, but you know, kept going, kept going back. Um, you know, the, just the honest sharing one on one with the counselors there and uh, the other uh, patients like me, the people like me that were there and sharing amongst them. Um, that was like the first time I'd ever really been honest, you know, in my life. First time I'd ever been open and, you know, talking about these things. And it's kind of like you feel uh, an instant relief. Um, you know, like there's, there's still work to be done to like lay a new foundation. But just like the first couple of times I shared, I was just like, wow, like this is like this is now this is what's cool. This is what's cool to me. This is um, something that I want to be a part of because it just I can just feel the unity inside of me, like my body, my mind and my spirit. Like, yes, yes. Keep doing this. Keep doing this. And so just stuck with that and learning how to meditate there. It was just an to get a free copy of the 12-step guide that I created for you, click on the link in the description below. Got a lot of tools to the point where it was like when it came to an end, I was like, I really don't even know if I want to go home. Like, I feel like safe here. I feel like here is a place where, you know, I can continue to grow and, you know, be safe. But I remember uh, someone shared there, they were like, we don't learn these things to stay here. We learn these things so we can go back into the world and, you know, impact the world in a positive way. Um, Cause we're not just meant to learn all this stuff and then keep to ourselves. We're meant to give it, like, give it away. We only keep what we have by giving it away. That was the first time I heard that. And I was just like, right. wow. Like first off, that makes no sense. But then it kind of clicked and I was like, Oh, okay. Like you, it's more about giving than what I can get. And so at that well, point, you know, I was, and, and as they say, you, you and it's just like sober living you should stay until you're afraid to leave right <laughs> yeah right I so being that. in treatment you're there you're comfortable and, and at first you probably were uncomfortable you right. didn't want to be there or a lot of people they don't want to be there and then you get comfortable there and then you're afraid to leave right. and that's when it's time to go right i i agree with that wholeheartedly because uh, it's kind of like you said in the beginning, when you're talking about um, getting into you know growth and comfort, uh, I don't feel like you know growth and comfort are. I thought like they're like opposites. Because when there's comfort, you know, if there's a tendency to you know kind of just kick your feet up and you know just kind of coast a little bit. Whereas when you're uncomfortable, that's where you know. The str you're straining like you're there's pressure being put on you but it's like good pressure it's, it's hard work that requires everything in you to you know muster up the courage and the strength and the energy to accomplish these tasks but when you do accomplish those tasks you know light bulbs go off and you just feel an authentic confidence you know in resiliency in yourself um so yeah but when i left there um you know i was kind of afraid but you know, my family kind of helped me out and stepped in and they were like, yeah, we'll, uh, we have an idea. Uh, one of the people that they went to church with was a store manager at Sprouts Farmer's Market. And they were like, we feel like you could benefit from having structure. When you have structure, you're, you're, uh, you can, you can be on top of things and, you know, with continuing going to meetings and, you know, working out every now and then. And I was just like, you know, like my ego inside of me was just like deflating. And I was like, uh -huh. hey, yeah. Like, and I was, I remember like, I was like, oh, okay, so I could be like a, like an assistant store manager. And they were like, well, we need a grocery clerk. And I was just like, oh, man. And, uh huh. But I just, you know, went with it. And, uh, yeah. Because you know, I kind of already had humility from, you know, the experience up to that point and, you know, going to rehab. And I was like, okay, uh, I mean, I'll do it. Like, I'm not, you know, I, I have a, enough humility to just, you know, come in here and work. And it ended up uh, being a great experience just from teaching me to, you know, work and not expect like a round of applause or crowds of 80,000 people clapping for me when I did my job. It was just like, I did my job and felt uh, good and a sense of respect for myself for doing my job and just went home. And I think that that lesson was valuable and just serving people, even if they weren't necessarily nice to me or they, made jokes about 
why I was big and how I was on the field or, you know, I, I saw girls in there that I used to talk to and they would see me in there and I'll try to hide. And so it was just like <laughs> a whole group where I learned so many lessons in that time. And oh, man. I'm, I'm grateful for that experience. If you got value from this video, if you heard what you needed to hear, be sure to like it. Comment if you've got a question or you have something to say, subscribe to the channel. Camelback Recovery provides treatment services for people struggling with mental health, mental illness, addiction, alcoholism, whatever it may be. So if you or a loved one is struggling and you need some guidance and you need some direction, reach out to us. Our contact information is down below or you can go to our website, camelbackrecovery.com, whether it be detox, inpatient treatment, outpatient treatment, sober living, recovery coaching, sober companion services, whatever it may be. Like I said, we can either help you or make sure that you get sent in the right direction. We help people all over the country, all over the world for that matter. I'll see you on the next video.